Students, greetings. It's time for something new. A new story, a new novel called Lord of the Flies. Strange title, but I'll give too much away if I explain why it's called Lord of the Flies. You've heard of Lord of the Rings. This is Lord of the Flies. Um, what's a predicament then? Uh, it's a problem or a tricky situation. And cast your mind back to dystopia. In what way is being in room 101 a predicament? You remember the torture chamber in the basement of Winston's workplace in 1984. Why is it problematic if you if you find yourself in there? Uh, I, think, I suppose I gave you a massive clue by calling it a torture chamber. And daunting means something difficult to deal with, intimidating, um, so something you are having problems approaching, really. A task, a daunting task is something that's, that makes you feel uncomfortable yeah, if you're about to do it. Uh, so bearing that in mind, why would stranded on a desert island be daunted? Daunting. What would what be the first thing you'd do? If I ask people this, say, some say shelter, some say food. Some say uh, rescue, but why is it? Why would it be daunted if you daunting if you find your, found yourself in a, a desert island, sort of suitcases strewn all over the place, your ship chugging off into the distance? Lord of the Flies finds several parties of schoolboys stranded on a desert island. Um, we just have two tasks, two or three tasks for you today, a quick lesson. Um, I want you to tell us who William Golding was and why he wrote Lord of the Flies. And also how you could consider this a dystopian novel. Remember, dystopias don't always have to take place in the future. They can also be an alternative present. So task one. Um, List five things you learn about William Golding. We'll talk about him. And task two is to list five things that inspired him to write Lord of the Flies. There's also a third task, which is to explain why this could be called a dystopian story. I've put a reminder of dystopian conventions here. So let's talk about the writer. He was a school teacher. Uh, who became a really successful novelist. He was born in 1911, died in 93. Um, he spent about 50 years of his life in Wiltshire, um, uh, Kent, uh, county in the, the west of England. He wrote several novels, at least five novels, uh, studied natural scientists, sciences and English literature at Bray's Nose in Oxford. He enlisted in the, Nor the Royal Navy in 1940, and he took part in the sinking of this large battleship. I think there are only two battle cruisers of that size, and one of them is called the Bismarck. Golding was involved in it. So he witnessed all the atrocities of uh, World War II from a naval point of view, also worked as an actor, lecturer, sailor, musician, and again, schoolmaster. So uh, he gave up teaching in 1961 to write. Um, so after war, he said, women are far superior to men and always have been. There aren't, unfortunately, any women in Lord of the Flies, no girls, because William Golding said, he just understands the boy's perspective a bit more um, comfortably. Um, he thinks that boys alone on an island are more of a reflection of how society itself would um, break down without rules. Girls, he said, are too clever. They always make something positive. They always add to a situation if you present them with food, they'll give you a meal. If you give them a women a house, they'll turn it into a home. Far too civilized. Uh, 
he's obsessed in this book with the idea it's an allegory for the breakdown of civilization. So a correct structure of society produced goodwill. To, but if society is disordered and there aren't any laws, then society breaks down. Men create evil like bees create honey, he said. And if you don't have laws, you're finished. So in all the flies, we have polite schoolboys becoming wild, basically, without adults around. He thought that um, children from this respectable background without rules would lose that hand of civilization, he calls it. He went to the school called Marlborough, which is near Bath, perhaps between Bath and Oxford. And then he went up to Oxford University to study. That's Wiltshire, where he spent most of his life. And he, a lot of his school children in Lord of the Flies come from these sorts of backgrounds, choir schools, private schools. William Golding refers in the novel to Coral Island and another book called Swallows and Amazons. Um, William Golding was talking to his wife one day and said, I think I'm going to write a story. What do you think, dear? about uh, boys who, instead of forming this utopian idea of these adventure stories like Coral Island and Swallows and Amazons, they actually do what boys really do, which is start bullying each other and forming gangs. And so Lord of the Flies was born. Uh, Coral Island, interestingly, features boys uh, it's narrated from the point of view of somebody called ralph and he speaks of another boy called jack there is a ralph and jack in lord of the flies so golding's drawing heavily on these influences the islands the tropical setting and these dangerous situations uh he said that german the german army despite being the most intelligent relatively speaking i think all nazi officers had phds or something they are bright guys but they just they turned into savages didn't they i mean they um there is a, a lot of them are, have been held as war criminals there's this tribal brutal aspect to them that's uncomfortable to to hear about so intelligent William Golding witnessed intelligent men doing horrendous things and he's articulating that he's dramatizing that in Lord of the Flies people from respectful backgrounds top left becoming wild possibly top right and you, we've spoken about the Hitler youth in um, and how they're dramatized in 1984 uh, so let's look at some more backgrounds on William Golding and his motivations from Course Hero. I love Course Hero, and I think he's going to let me embed the video because he allows embedding. So hopefully this stands the test of time. The context of this book is that it's set during World War II. Now, William Golding served with the Royal Navy and saw active duty in the North Atlantic. He took part in a battle that sunk the German battleship the Bismarck, and he commanded a rocket launching ship during the landing at Normandy. Golding was shocked by the great human capacity for pain and destruction. And it wasn't just from the Nazis' treatment of people in concentration camps or Japan's treatment of their prisoners. The Allies' actions concerned him as well. The Allies justified destruction in the name of morality, Yet such a claim led to a moral gray area where inhumane behavior became acceptable, even normalized. The results of these ideas are explored all throughout Lord of the Flies. Jack and his hunters in particular perpetrate evil. While they start with animals, they ultimately kill and even torture human beings. Even Ralph, who represents society and order, participated in the hunt and the killing of Simon. He starts to feel that darkness inside him that ends up overtaking the island. All humans are shown in the text as being capable of doing evil. Lord of the Flies was written during the Cold War when humanity lived for the first time under a clear threat of nuclear war and mutual destruction. 
Atomic bombs had been used twice by the United States to force the surrender of Japan in 1945. Leaders of the Soviet Union felt compelled to develop the bomb for both defensive and offensive purposes. Just as in the text when the boys break into groups that come to mistrust and seek the destruction of one another, nations separated into groups. Now, most countries fell into the sphere of either the Soviet Union and its communist allies or the United States and the West. Tension was high between the two blocs. The Cold War and its potential for total annihilation, as well as the paranoia between the two sides, is readily apparent in the text. In fact, at the very beginning, Piggy wonders if a bomb has destroyed the world, and he's worried about being found by the Reds, a name members of the Western Bloc often apply to communists. In this book, we see the fragility of civilization on display as the boys realize the savagery of human nature. Thank you, Course Heroes. So it is an allegory for the tension between the Cold War as well. Uh, Cold War nations of Russia and America, possibly. Um, the Cold War means war that doesn't actually pass. It's the fear of nuclear threat. It's a fear of nuclear invasion. The three tasks. List five things you learned about Golding. List five things that inspired him to write Lord of the Flies. And task three, in what way could you call this a dystopian story? Let's introduce the story. So we have a nuclear bomb somewhere, possibly, well, in England. So schoolboys from a background such as this, various schools actually, are all evacuated from yeah, the lifetime of hard study and hard sport off to Golding says it's a place in the Pacific Ocean. He doesn't say where he said it wasn't necessary. All you need to know is that the boys are on their way somewhere by plane and they're shot down by anti aircraft fire. And we are going to join them in the next lesson on the beachfront. But before then, your tasks. Five things you learned about William Golding. List five things that inspired him to write Lord of the Flies. And uh, three, in what way could you call this a dystopian story? So are any of these factors in the list, conventions in the list, reflected in what you know of the story so far? Um, what else? So here's an example of what you could write for the first one. Five things you learned about William Golding. Well, he, you know, he served in the Navy and he, he grew up in Wiltshire. The list five things that inspired him to write all the flies. Uh, Cold War, um, perhaps those stories like Coral Island and then perhaps something of his beliefs on law, society or men. And then there's another example of what you could write for how it's dystopian. So just those quick tasks, please. And we'll start reading next time.